Up to this point, we've talked about different kinds of uncertainty, random uncertainty, calibration uncertainty, systematic, so forth. But now we have to figure out how to combine those different things into uh, one total uncertainty for our final uh, value. So uh, that all of those uh, uncertainties that we've talked about, whether uh, big picture random or systematic or smaller picture like linearity and uh, stereosis uh, error and so forth that you can see listed on these uh, manufacturer specifications are called elemental errors. They're single errors that we calculate uh, one at a time. Uh, now what we want to do is combine those elemental errors into a total uncertainty. Uh, and we want some kind of combination process uh, that's going to mean that that total uncertainty is going to be bigger than any elemental uncertainties. Uh, but we also just want to add them together because chances are those uncertainties, if there's error in our value, each of those uncertainties is going to take that, uh, uh, that error in different directions. And so they're not going to sum completely. They're not all going to make the number bigger. Uh, some are going to make it bigger and some are going to make it smaller. And the process that we use to do that, to give us that number that's bigger than any uh, individual one, um, but less than the sum of those, is called quadrature. Uh, so you, we, we use this in the Pythagorean theorem. You recognize this format here. Uh, and so each of these values here are elemental errors. We square them to make them all positive because we want them all to add together. Uh, and then we add them and take the square root, and that's called the quadrature. Uh, and before we do that calculation, you need to make, make sure of two things. One, everything has to be in the same units, uh, and everything has to have the same confidence values. Uh, so just be careful uh, when you start that quadrature process. So as an example of how to use quadrature and how to combine elemental uncertainties, we're going to talk about something called design stage uncertainty. Design stage uncertainty happens before you take data when you're trying to choose your instrumentation. So we don't have any standard deviations here. We don't have any data that we can analyze. But we want to decide if are, are my instruments essentially good enough for my research question? Uh, are they going to give me accurate enough values uh, to answer um, the things I'm trying to understand. So the way we do that is for systematic error, we would use uh, manufacturers reported uncertainties. And uh, for random error, we'll use uh, resolution error. So consider our rotational viscometer. And here up in the upper right, we have uh, the manufacturer data, data from the, <laughs> from the uh, manufacturer. Uh, and we would, in this case, we would look up here and we'd say, okay, measurement error is plus or minus 5%. Uh, my average reading value uh, is going to be at about 90 millipascals. So we uh, do a little research to figure out what, where we thought most of our values would be. Uh, and I could see that my design stage systematic error is 4.5 millipascals. Uh, and then random error, we'd look at the res uh, resolution of our instrument. So I'd look at this here and I'd say, okay, this doesn't have any decimal points in its reading for viscosity. Uh, that little new is viscosity. Uh, and so my uh, resolution error is that last smallest digit. So it would be one millipascal here. So I've got two different uh, elemental errors here. Uh, but I want to make sure that I consider units and confidence level. Uh, now, they're in the same units. They're both in me uh, millipascals, but they're not at the same confidence level. Manufacturers' uh, uncertainties, uh, we can assume, are at 95% uh, at 2 sigma. Uh, uh, but resolution error is going to be just at 68% at 1 sigma. So we want to change that resolution error to get up to 95% because that's what engineers use uh, most of the time. And if we're going to be more certain, right, if we're going to be 95% certain that our data lies within run that range, we want to make that range bigger, right? So we're going to multiply that resolution by our Z-score of 95%, uh, which is 2. 
right? So our calculation takes our initial resolution error, one millipascal, multiplies it by two as our z-score, uh, and gets us a resolution error of two millipascals. Now, at the design stage, uh, this is a little complicated because resolution error tends to be really small. Uh, and we probably, in a lot of cases, are going to have a random uncertainty that's larger uh, than just that resolution error. So in a case like this, we'd ask ourselves, is it hard to take consistent measurements, right? Or there's, is there something about our experimental setup uh, that means that we're not always going to get the same reading? Uh, and does the quantity itself uh, tend to vary with time? Uh, and if that quantity varies with time, then our random error is going to be significantly larger. Well, in this case, uh, our uh, quantity isn't necessarily going to change with time, although it does a little bit because uh, if we have warmer oil that we're trying to measure the viscosity, it's going to cool down a little bit. Uh, but even trickier is the fact that the oil is, it's going to be hard to keep the oil uh, well mixed. Uh, and so different parts of that oil might have different temperature values. Uh, and viscosity is highly dependent on temperature. So there's going to be some variation uh, in our readings based upon uh, the change of temperature over time and even the change of temperature within the space of the oil that we're measuring. And so as a judgment call, we're going to say, oh, let's, that resolution error is going to be higher. Let's double that resolution error uh, or that random error from just the resolution error, which brings us to a value of uh, four millipascals. So now we've got two different elemental uncertainties, our random uncertainty and our systematic uncertainty, and we want to combine those in quadrature. Uh, and so we throw in our value for systematic error and our value for random error, and we find a total uh, uncertainty of six. Now, notice that that's bigger than both of these, right? but it's less than their sum. And that's the nature of quadrature. That's what we're going to find with quadrature. So then in our design stage process, if this were a design stage uncertainty process, we'd ask ourselves, is six millipascals uncertainty good enough, right? If for some reason I had a goal of differentiating liquids uh, that might differ in viscosity by only a millipascal or two, I'd look at this and I'd say, oh, that's not going to work, right? There's going to be too much uncertainty in the values that I produce to actually differentiate uh, these liquids that are very close to each other in terms of viscosity. And in that case, I'd have to go back to the drawing board. I'd have to think about getting more expensive instrumentation uh, that's going to give me smaller systematic errors. I'd have to think about how do I keep that temperature really stable throughout the fluid uh, to make sure that my random errors were smaller. Uh, and, uh, and both of those are going to involve uh, spending more money and more time. Okay, so yeah, sometimes, sometimes little blue guy, your, your instrumentation is not good enough. Um, but you want to do that first, right? You don't want to find that out at the end of your experiment uh, that your data is not good enough to answer your question. All right, so to summarize finding a total uncertainty, you want to identify and quantify all the elemental uncertainties. That's your first step. Your second step is make sure everything is in the same units and the same confidence levels. Uh, and then finally, we want to combine those values in terms of uh, using quadrature. Now, one little trick here uh, is that the element, if one elemental uncertainty is uh, less than one-fifth of the largest elemental uncertainty, uh, we can just ignore it. So that sometimes simplifies our math. Uh, and the reason for that is that quadrature is dominated by uh, the larger numbers. If you have a large number, uh, you're, you're, the result of that quadrature process is going to be close to that large number. Uh, and so if something's, uh, like it says, less than one-fifth, uh, it's going to make a very small difference to the overall result. So we, we can just throw it out. All right. And that is uh, how you combine elemental uncertainties.